Welcome, everybody, to another edition of Bear Bets. I'm your host, Felipe. I'm by Jeff Schwartz. I'm doing today. I am clearly see at the home office in Connecticut. Uh, Jeff is in our lovely studio in New York with a little picture of a bear over his left shoulder, which is reminding me that my presence is always in the studio in New York. Sammy P and Will will join us shortly uh, for the gambling group chat. Uh, this week is just a uh, an exercise in uh, hold your nose, swallow hard, close your eyes, gulp, and uh, what what bad quarterback in a bad weather game uh, do, do I want to bet on? And not a whole lot of uh, opportunities that I see. Maybe, maybe something will happen over the next uh, day or so where we get we, we get line movement, maybe we get a better number than uh, we anticipated, and we could add some more plays, but not a whole lot. I wanted to ask you something though, Jeff, about the Jets situation, because of course we know the Jets are near and dear to my heart and cause of so much angst. Like you're a player in that locker room, and I think it's pretty apparent that the plan was for Zach Wilson never to take another snap for the New York Jets. And now he is, and it's clear that the lot the, the locker room are, are not fans. Like, like how how does this like yeah even come close to being successful on Sunday? No, it's not. Think about this. Three weeks ago, the Jets benched Jack Wilson. Okay, that's fair. You bench quarterbacks all the time, but Bear they didn't put him second string. They put him third string. So basically, saying, hey man you're just never going to play here again. Like, we can't even have you be our backup. We couldn't put you in the game if Tim Boyle got hurt. We, we, you cannot play for us anymore. Tim Boyle goes out predictably, plays terribly for two weeks. Imagine and they that. cut him. They don't even, like, say, you're being benched. You're just straight out of here. Goodbye. And they bring Zach Wilson back. Now, the story, of course, is that, you know, maybe Zach Wilson didn't want to play. I, I don't necessarily buy that bear. I think there's probably apprehension about going back in the game with an organization that doesn't believe in you because it's very clear that they didn't believe in him. Right. And so I get the mindset very, very quickly of like, you know what? I don't want to, I don't want to ruin any chance I have of getting a job somewhere else of getting hurt for an organization that doesn't believe in me and very clearly is not going to have me around next season. But in the end, of course, if you have a chance to play in the national football league, you're going to play. And I've been in this spot before with in 2010 with the Panthers where we had quarterback issues, we benched guys, we brought guys back in. And look, the players know who is good and who's not good. That's very clear. It's over the years. Like, I can tell right away if a guy we draft is going to be good or not. It's very clear. Um, and your job, though, Bear, as a professional, is to play a game where you're being paid to play in, you're being trusted by the teammates on your team, by your coaching staff, by the ownership, by the fan base to play your best. And your best might not be good enough, but you're tasked with playing your best. And so even though the players might not agree with Zach Wilson as their starter, they'll go play hard. Now, will they roll their eyes at him in practice if he makes a bad throw or a bad read? Absolutely. I mean, there's going to be bad body language. There might be blowups on the sidelines, but guys are going to play hard. It's our job to play hard. They're not going to win. There's not going to be a faith in Zach Wilson. And so how does that trickle down? I'll explain. When, when you have a good quarterback, and I played luckily enough with, with Alex Smith and Eli Manning, even Jake DeLone before he kind of combusted in Carolina, there's, there's always a faith that if things go poorly on the field, that guy can make it right for you. Oh, I have a holding penalty. You know what? Eli Manning got my back. He'll complete a pass. We'll make up for it. Defense, right? I give up a touchdown. It's Okay. Quarterback on the all oh, will 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 make a reference. And there's, there's a freeness. There's a freeness you play with when you know you have a guy in that quarterback that will always get you in the right situation. They'll make it right for you. The Jets have the opposite effect where if they make one mistake, Bear, if the defense gives up 14 points, 17 points, they might lose that game. And so you play with a tightness as a team of trying not to make mistakes because you know that a mistake that you make might be too much to overcome because you don't trust your quarterback to be that guy. So that's where it manifests itself in, you know, in a 60 minute game. Like there, there's just a tightness you play with. And then when you start giving up points or things not going poorly, there's a sort of just sacking confidence as a team because you know, your quarterback can't get you out of those bad situations. Yeah. So, so it sounds like it's a recipe for success on Sunday afternoon. And of course the jets now yes. have taken money. Yes. 
And of course, we'll go out and bet, uh, pull the outright upset over the Houston Texans, who uh, have the offensive rookie of the year, maybe the uh, the head coach, maybe the coach of the year, and will wind up in the playoffs. So, of course, this means the Jets will wind up winning on Sunday in typical NFL fashion. Of course, yeah. Uh, absolutely. If this game gets to like three or under, th- there's no one gets to get under three, right? I mean, you take the te- Texans at minus two and a half if it gets there. No, it's three and a half now. No, I can't either. But I'm I'm, I'm surprised by this by this movement. Um, as you mentioned, this week is just growth. The, the backup quarterback situation is bad. I mean, and even the backups, the the guys that are hurt that are playing, even you know a guy like the Chiefs' offense not not playing their full potential. So you just end up with a lot of bad quarterback games. You mentioned the bad weather games, but we still have plays for you. In this show for the NFL, Dude. not a lot, but we'll but but Bear has one for now. Then we'll get to our best bets, and when gamble group chat, we'll throw out a bunch of things for you guys. So let's start with Bear's one wager right now. It's the final game, I guess one of the final games. There's two Monday night games this week for some odd reason. Is the New York Giants at the Green Bay Packers? Packers favored by six and a half in this game. Excuse me, the Packers are at the Giants. My bad. Packers favored by six and a half on the road. Total is 36 and a half here. New York Giants off a of bye. They're four and eight. The G-Men are four, seven, and one against the spread. Packers six and six. Just beat the Chiefs. They're seven and five uh, against the spread. All right, Bear, what do we got here? This is just one of those where I have to blindly just take the six and a half with the Giants. Everybody loves the Packers now. They pull the outright upset uh, over, over Kansas City uh, on Sunday night. Everyone knows uh, Jordan Love is back. Uh, Green Bay's a playoff team. Floor could be head uh, coach of the year. They're going to win out. Everything, everything is great in Green Bay. You go from a near touchdown underdog to six and a half point favorite. That's always uh, a little concerning to me where maybe everyone's being a little over, whereas maybe the week before you were being a little undervalued. Maybe this week you're being uh, a little bit more undervalued. So Giants have been frisky lately. And uh, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna grab them here, plus some points. Maybe they. I hope they don't win the outright because I know we got some uh, Giants under five and a half uh, season win total that we're uh, yeah. would be in jeopardy of uh, losing. But uh, I think the Giants to play well on Monday night. I, I'm gonna take them plus the points. This is a perfect spot to fade the public, right? Like the public's all over the Packers in this spot. They just beat the Chiefs. They're on a winning streak. They might make the playoffs now. Giants, Tommy DeVito. Uh, Tyrod Taylor got his his window activated to practice. I don't know his status at, at time of the taping. Maybe he plays. I don't think he he does in his first week back to practice. Maybe he gets in there. The Giants are frisky enough. They're off a bye, too, which a good coaching staff should figure out something to do. A little offense, a little defense off a bye. So I'm with you here, plus six and a half for the Giants. All right, time for the gambling group chat. It's going to be Sammy P, Will Hill, myself, and the Bear. Sammy, guys, very, very, very vocal about MVP votes. We talk MVP votes. We talk some Good features. Thing. We talk other awards in the National Football League. We'll do that next. Here's a gambling group chat for you guys. NFL style gambling group chat is back. Myself, Jeff, Sammy P, Will Hill. Boy, I have not in my memory brought a considered or brought up or remembered a week like this where the combination of potential bad weather and backup quarterback matchup to backup quarterback play and injuries like has made it so difficult to come across anything because unless you got ahead of <clears throat> unless you got ahead of these totals early on I mean you're you're looking at totals of 30 33 like like it, it's just amazing to see how uh, weather and backup quarterback play is really hindered my handicapping process at least like they were there i found it hard to come across two games uh, that that i liked right now that that i thought at least were still kind of bettable so uh, I, I don't know uh, what what have you got how have you guys approached this week sammy Wait, you don't want to bet C.J. Beathard and Joe Flacco? What's wrong with you? Uh, yeah, I, I, you know, call me, <laughs> like, call me crazy. I'm, 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 such, I'm such a party pooper. I mean, I mean, I mean, I could, I could be betting Aiden O'Connell and Josh Dobbs too, for, for, for that matter. I mean, we, we survived Bailey Zappi, Mitch Trubisky on Thursday night, but it's just rough, man. So let me tell you, I, I talked to John Murray, our buddy in Vegas, and he gave me the uh, sharpest sides this week, and I just mm-hmm. pulled them up. The sharpest sides this week in Vegas are the Jets and the Giants. That's I like the Giants. 
that's where we're at. Now, look, I'm not saying that I'm on them. I'm just the wise guys took the points with the Houston Texans or against the Houston Texans, and they are doing the old fashioned zigzag because we discussed this game last week, right? Green Bay, Kansas City. A lot of people, respected people. This is a good spot for Kansas City. We're going to lay the points. We're going to lay the points. And then Kansas City loses to Green Bay. Sports books cleaned up. So what does the public do? Oh, Packers are a playoff team now. Jordan loves pretty good. And now everybody that didn't bet the Packers last week, Will, is going to bet the Packers this week. And they're laying, what, six and a half against the New York Giants in New Jersey. And the books, again, are going to need the dog. But I just, I can't bet. Here's where I'm at. I can't bet any more Patriots. I can't bet any more Giants. I can't bet any more Jets. It's just no fun betting on teams that can't score two touchdowns a game. Yeah, I mean, Bear mentioned the quarterback situation. You just have to go in and knowing, hey, if I'm going to bet the NFL, you're probably going to have to bet some really bad quarterbacks. You're probably going to have to sit there and root for some really bad quarterbacks. Like a couple that jump out to me, I don't know, Carolina getting five, five and a half. I don't know. The Saints, he, here's a, a, a like, a, you know, a, a, I think a, something that would have made you money this year. Just say, hey, when I have a crappy team, I can't lay points with them. If a bad team is playing another bad team, I'm just going to take the points. So you look at the Saints, it could be Winston, who is probably going to throw a few touchdown passes passes just which team is he going to throw them for so carolina can you take the points there <laughs> their defense is older they're kind of beat up they've been leaking the oil a little bit so carolina is one that's interesting um look i just i, I know the jets line has come down and that's supposedly a sharp side but how many points are they going to score speaking of teams that can't score i mean what are they going to score 10 13 i think houston was stroud I, I would think houston's probably going to get into the 20 so that's one where i'd actually lay the points with houston and uh, the biggest game of the week is Chiefs Bills. I'll just say this: I made dumber bets than the Bills at fifty to one to win the Super Bowl because all these teams are beat up. I know the Bills have a tough schedule, but if they got in, there's no like dominant team that they couldn't be. I mean, look, they're in Kansas City and they're only getting a point and a half. So, if you want to just put a little couch change on, on something, Bills fifty to one. Like I said, I've made worse bets in my life. I'm saying we used to just be able to take Pat Mahomes as a short favorite and just just put the money on on the Chiefs to be done with it. And this year. You just can't do that right now. Like, are you comfortable laying even a point and a half with Kansas City at the moment? I, I'm oh. not. I'm the biggest Chiefs fan there is on this show. Like, and so, like in the past, like to your point about this week, that was a wager you just made. Like Patrick Mahomes under a field goal, short underdog as well. Like, put the money in Kansas City and the Chiefs. Look, certainly if they just sort of start clicking an offense, but what now? Week 14, they start doing week 14. They're gonna win this game because of Buffalo's injuries. But bu bu Buffalo's off a bye. Their offense looks a little bit better, firing Ken Dorsey. Uh, your point, though, Will, is interesting about the AFC because I do think if they got into the playoffs as, an, as a wild card team, they're the they're a team that like nobody wants to play, right? If you're Kansas City, if you're if you're the, the Ravens, if you're if, if you're the Dolphins, they're a team with Josh Allen that you see on your playoff schedule and think, oh, I'd rather play someone else. And that I think is where Buffalo can make can make some noise if they win on Sunday against Kansas City and are, are eventually a playoff team because they have a quarterback who's good enough to lead them to multiple playoff wins. The question obviously is sort of the, the team psyche and not being able to sort of get over this playoff hurdle now the last couple of years. You can still get Buffalo at around plus 380 or so to make the playoffs and like I said the schedule is tough, but I, I think they easily could have won last week. Probably should have won uh, last week. Didn't, but may, maybe this Chiefs game now doesn't appear as difficult, and uh, maybe they beat Dallas off of the Philly game. Like, like I think the road is definitely there for for the Bills to potentially make the playoffs, it, it, as opposed to where we thought they were uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, you, we we talked about the Lawrence injury. Is there a play in this division now on either the Colts or the Texans to win the, to win this division? I personally don't think so. I still think uh, Jacksonville, they're still around minus 225 or so, I think, uh, 215 to win the division. But they own the tiebreaker with the Colts and uh, the Texans, obviously, they split. But I still think Jacksonville hangs on in this division. What about you, Will? 
I hope you're right. I'm not as confident as you are, though. I don't think he's going to play this week. I mean, we'll just start with this week against the Browns. I, I do like the Browns here. I don't think he's going to play. If he does play, I don't think he's going to be mobile. And if you, if you have a Lawrence who's just a sitting duck, he's not the same player. It's interesting. I don't think this has gotten enough uh, discussion. The Browns, their splits are amazing. You usually don't see this with an NFL team. At home, their defense, I think, nine and a half points per game allowed. On the road, it's like 30. It's very strange, the disparity between home and road. So, um, like you're back in Flacco if you're taking the Browns, but I do think the Browns get it done. I just don't know how, how many points the Jags score in this spot with Beathard or even Beathard's banged up. It could be our boy Rourke from Oregon State. So uh, I do think the Browns win this week. And then after that, who knows? Any play in Jacksonville, Cleveland? No. Um, I'm betting against Dan Campbell again, though, because I love to do it. <laughs> I mean, the last memory I have of Jared Goff in December in Chicago Good was point. when he was so cold, guys. It was 25 degrees. The Rams went into Chicago. It was 29 and snowy. And Jared Goff threw four interceptions. And he, he complained after the game about how he couldn't grip the ball. It was so cold. You look at the forecast in Chicago for Sunday. We're talking the low of 26. Potential snow. It's going to be windy. It's going to be ugly. And this is a dome team going outside. And, and you look at the board. You know, Detroit was four like Monday, and now it's three, three and a half, and the hooks are starting to disappear. So if you still have three and a half on Chicago, I know the Bears aren't good, but the Bears are still trying to win games. They're not in the gutter like New England. You also think about the last meeting in Chicago, or in Detroit, rather, where the Bears were up. Weren't they up two touchdowns with three minutes to go? Justin mm -hmm. Fields might not be a Hall of Fame quarterback, and I'm saying that facetiously. But Justin Fields does a lot of things that the Lions really can't contend, including that broken play and the pass down the field. That secondary is not great. And there's a reason Detroit, who barely survived last week in New Orleans, is only three, three and a half in Chicago. There's a lot of factors working against the Lions. Well, their defense is atrocious, right, guys? I mean, like every week they sort of have a situation where their defense allows a ton of points and a ton of yards. And you've talked about Fields' ability, and you've been absolutely right on this, to, to, to move the ball with his legs, to make enough plays through the air. Like the Lions defense showed last week, they should have, they were, what, 21 nothing in New Orleans? I have that right, guys? And the Saints were driving at the end to try to, to, try to win that game. Like they, they, the, the Lions' inability to stop teams on defense keeps opponents in the game each and every week. It bears off a, they're off a bye, right, Sammy? I mean, maybe there's a chance that there's a little bit of a wrinkle on offense or, de you know, or defense that helps them early in this game to, to, uh, to put some points up. So I'm with you on, on the Bears here because of the reasons you mentioned, plus the Lions defense is not very good. You, 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 uh, well, I mean, uh, Sammy mentioned Dan Campbell, and it continues to amaze me that he's still favored to win Coach of the Year in these markets. Like, I, I think... At some point, I, I mentioned it last week. I think that the article about like the the executive insider, where it was Tom Palacero, I think you like previews and get kind of like all, all basically NFL executives. Who would you vote for? Who do you think will win? Like, I think if and when this article gets published, like we're going to be like the the mar. I think the markets have no idea. Like the markets had it completely wrong with the college football playoff and posting FSU minus eight nine hundred when and then ultimately that went far away like i had no idea what to do like at this point like i don't see how it could be anybody else than D'Amico ryan's or maybe shane steik and I, I know there's still a chance for for mike tomlin maybe there's a chance for for lafleur but i i just don't see how dan campbell's favored right now in this market will yeah, the Mike Tomlin coach of the year bus took a little detour last week. I think it's in yeah. a ditch somewhere. So that one, uh, look, a long way to go. Remember this time last year, Dable, the Giants hit a hit a rough stretch and they were, you know, weren't looking good. And Dable was still thirty to one with a few weeks left. So don't give up on anything. I mean, that was obviously a bad one last week. If I had nothing in pocket though, uh, it's simple, but I think that you alluded to it Ryan's plus two seventy five. I mean, that's just that to me, that's the best bet. That's a great story. People love Stroud. They haven't been good in a while. It's been a bad franchise. That's usually the, uh, the mode for, for winning. That's usually the criteria for winning coach of the year. So if I had nothing in pocket, Ryan's plus two seventy five. I think it's the best bet on the board. When they passed it on third and nine, I couldn't, I couldn't believe what I was watching. You run the ball, they burn the timeout, and then, you know, like, it just, it's statistically and mathematically in favor of you not throwing the ball. Forget about how awful the play call was, where they, they, it was play action and Goff almost got sacked. 
And then he throws a pass off his back foot that should have, whatever. I just, that guy in game makes me so excited to bet against them in the playoffs. <laughs> they might win 11 games, 12 games, whatever. Good. Let's fatten the pig. And then we'll put them on the spit and we'll rotate it and we'll all eat after we bet against them in the playoffs. If you get a Kyle Shanahan against Dan Campbell or a Sirianni against Dan Campbell, I cannot wait. I will I will go to the bank to have to bet that game. I will have to go to the bank. Floyd, Floyd, Floyd Mayweather. Uh, any- <laughs> Conor McGregor type money here. Is there Probably anything? Not. Yeah, I, I feel like Sam's going to do that. Is there any, any way, is there any money you think to put on like a Matt LaFleur or Shane Steichen? If those teams end up being wild card teams, if, if we like D'Amico Ryans and what if the Texans somehow fall out, the Colts hop in there, or the Packers, especially the way they're playing right now, they make the playoffs. Or I mean, Matt LaFleur right now is plus 2,000 to be coach of the year. If they end up winning the last four or five games in a row and end up, you know, look, again, it's probably not going to happen, but a 10 and 7 and end up as a 5 seed in the NFC, there wouldn't be a 5 seed, a 6 seed in the NFC. Is, is he coach of the year? Plus two, is that a good wager, plus 2,000? Wait a minute. You say, it, you say it might not happen. Look at their last five games. Giants, Bucks, Panthers, Vikings, Bears. Yeah, so they'll be 10 and 7, right? I, I believe would be the record. So, I mean, plus 2,000 feels like a good number for – a coach that has a team that doesn't lose a game, you know, uh, you know, or one game after, you know, after the midpoint of the season, I, I think that's a, not a bad place to be right now. No, it, it's not. And, and, and I already have Steichen in pocket from earlier in the year. And they like, if they, if the Colts get to the playoffs with the, the Jonathan Taylor situation early in the year and you're trotting Gardner Minshew out there, like first year head coach, like, like that's another guy, like, that's why I just can't see Dan Campbell winning this award. Uh, the Lions were supposed to be good this year, and and, and I, I think I think all we need to do is like show the voters like the the timestamp on the on the text that Sammy sent last week with the Dan Campbell in all caps with like eleven exclamation points when it when they when they did throw the ball on on third and nine late there. Like that, that's all the evidence that you need to, to not vote for Dan Campbell, right? Yeah, it's interesting with Campbell, too, because he's so weird in games. Sometimes he's super aggressive. Sometimes he's really passive. He's very analytical. Then he's not. There's You can't get a gauge from him. He's all over the map in terms of But I agree. Like, Detroit was minus money to win the division. Winning the division and holding form and meeting expectations, that doesn't really – that's usually not the way to win this award. Well, you never know when the coffee wears off with him. Well, I guess you do, actually, because when <laughs> he's aggressive, when he's had six espressos, when the coffee starts wearing off and he starts coming down, he starts doing dumb stuff. Uh, can I just just bring up Mike McDaniel? That's the only guy we haven't talked about yet. At you know nine to two, Miami gets the one seed. Miami finishes first in a division that was supposed to be dominated by Buffalo and New York. A lot of things had to go Miami's way, but you know maybe one of us is still holding that Mike McDaniel <laughs> ticket. I and wonder also who a, uh, <laughs> Tua or a Tyree Kill MVP ticket. <laughs> Uh, you, 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 I'm glad you brought up MVP because that's where I was going to go next. Like we talked about last week, how like if you were if you if you wanted to play Purdy, you had to do it then. Uh, he was what 16 to one, 14 to one, I think last week, and then during the game he was still 10 to one, and then now here he is uh, three to one, the three and a half to one or so uh, to win that award. So he is clearly in in the mix. But, but but again, I think the debate now is, is it him or, I mean, Dak, certainly his name is in the mix, but I do think the, the, the Cowboys have to win that division, especially being that the Niners already beat the, the Cowboys badly. Uh, Purdy went in, the Niners went into, into Philadelphia and won. So I think like an Eagles one seed like argument, I don't think that's going to hold up. But, but I, I guess the question is, and I'm just going to, let you go, Sam, because I know you, you and I, and I think Jeff and Will, you probably have the, the same, maybe not the same price that 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 Sammy has on Tyree Kill, but like you, you see what this guy does every single week, and maybe if you're kind of undecided on it, one of the quarterbacks this year, you can't decide if it's Purdy or or, or Dak or or whomever else. Like Hill, like maybe this is the maybe this is the year where you just don't say. Hey, okay, we're going to give Tyree Kill the offensive player of the year and let let the quarterback be MVP. Like he has a legit case to win this award, doesn't he, Sam? 
He definitely does. Last week, he had a 60-yard touchdown and a 78-yard touchdown in the first half. And they were up so big, they didn't even need to use him in the third quarter. He was on the bench in the fourth quarter. They weren't padding stats like Dak does in Dallas. And I've been on social all morning today because I've been trying to speak this Tyreek MVP thing into existence. And the common thing is, who have the Dolphins beaten? And you look at the Dallas Cowboys schedule, and they haven't beat a team with a winning record yet. They scored 40 on the Giants, 33 on the Patriots, 49 on the Giants the second time, 33 on Carolina, 45 on Washington. So it's okay for Dak to beat up on bad teams and be 3-1, to 350 to win the MVP, but Tyreek Hill can't win it. That doesn't even make sense. They both beat bad teams, Dallas and Miami. To me, Tyreek Hill is the most unguardable player in the league. He has 611 yards after the catch. After the catch. He's going to have 2,000 yards this year. Might have 20 touchdowns. We haven't seen a receiver ever do stuff like this. If he stays healthy, Miami gets the one seed in the AFC, goes 13-4, and four, and he has 2,000 yards and maybe 900 after the catch. How does he not get more love? It is so lazy to me, guys that the bookmakers do the same thing all season. We're going to take the quarterback of the best team and make him the favorite. We did it with Tua. Then we did it with Mahomes. Then we did it with Lamar. Then we did it with Hertz. And now we're doing it with Purdy. Those guys aren't even the most important parts of their teams. You take Tua off the Dolphins. They have three more losses, maybe four. So yeah, I, it's I did uh... this a few years back where where I looked, I looked at like what it took for a non quarterback to win MVP in the NFL. And it was always like a record breaking season. It was, you know, I think it was Adrian Peterson, right? In 2012 was nine yards away right. from Eric Dickerson. It was LT the year he had 40 touchdowns. And then I think Sean Alexander won when he we had 2000 yards, right? In 05 ish, somewhere around there. So if Tyreek Hill gets over 2000 yards, Sammy, like if he gets to that number, which is seems like it's very plausible and very, and can happen pretty quickly then I think voters will have to look at him if down the stretch Dak Prescott falters a little bit, if Brock Purdy down the stretch kind of falters, if Jalen Hurts has some poor games, if Patrick Mahomes is not able to. like I think if if he gets those landmarks, if he gets 2,000 yards and X amount of touchdowns and it's uh, the best season in wide receiver history, which I think right now numbers-wise is tracking in that direction, especially all the advanced numbers compared to like the 2007 Moss season, then I think it's a very real possibility he wins MVP because it has to be above and beyond a great season for someone who's not a quarterback. So we've seen the voters reward. And look, Adrian Peterson, we were 10 and six that season in Minnesota. We we weren't the best team in the NFL, but he had 2000 yards, and almost broke the record. Sean Alexander, LT, like, so I think if he gets over 2000 yards and he has a season that voters cannot ignore because it's a record breaking season, he is certainly, uh, I think viable to win MVP. He's awesome. I'd have no problem if he won. Like he's a cheat code. He's an incredible player. Like he's certainly deserving and he's going to get consideration, but I just don't think he's going to win. I, I've heard Aaron shots say, Hey, I can basically, and he's one of the voters and there's only 50 of them. He's basically, he, he's come out and said, I can't see myself ever voting for a non quarterback because the word valuables in there and, and quarterbacks just more valuable than receivers. So I think it's a quarterback award. I, I think a quarterback's going to win Purdy. Uh, and look three to one. I don't know if I'd still bet it at three to one, but their last four games, Rams, Seahawks, Cardinals, and then Christmas night, they host the, the Ravens. If they win all four and they're 14 and three, and he's got a ton of touchdowns and he's only got a handful of picks and they're 14 and three and they're the one seed. Uh, I think Purdy's going to win this award. Now we talked about it in September when it was 22 to one talked about it last week when it was 17 to one. Again, do you want to bet it at three to one? No, but I, I think the, the path is here for Purdy and, the people voting on this are in the media. They're writers. They like a good story. I mean, what's a better story than 20 months ago? This kid's the last pick in the draft. And then he's holding up the MVP trophy, you know, less than two years later. So I think, I think party still got the inside track here. Yeah, I think boo. Boo. <laughs> so, You're right though. I mean, nothing you said was wrong. <laughs> you know, that, that, that's what, what Will just said, I think. And again, it, it, the fact that final pick in the draft, Probably would have won the NFC last year if he didn't get hurt. We, I think we all, we we all made the joke on text. Like, hey, at least we finally got to see the 2022 NFC Championship game uh, on Sunday. But yeah, but to to be injured in that game, to come back and do what he's doing, like that's a that's a great story. And I, I think that will factor into I think maybe some people's minds. And and I we brought it up too how this year. And, and I think last year was the first year they did it. Like you one, two, three, four, five. I think it does on the MVP now. 
and yeah. like he's going to be the guy who's going to be on every ballot. Like, like maybe there will be people who vote Tyreek number one, but you're going to vote Brock Purdy probably number two. And there may be people that vote Brock Purdy number one, and then you vote maybe a couple of more quarterbacks, two and three, and Tyreek is four. And I, I, I think there's going to be a higher variance of where Tyreek will land on ballots without being able to make up the fact that I think Purdy is going to be like no lower than two or three uh, on nearly everybody's ballot. So plus two, it might steal some votes from Hill too. You might get some Dolphins voters say, "Oh, I'm going to give it to Tua just because he's a quarterback," and some people split. So that could be a factor too. Not that I disagree with anything Sammy said. Like, I, look, Hill's awesome. Hill's Hill's incredible, but you might get some Tua votes that hurts that hurts Hill. No, 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 no. I was just going to make a joke saying I'm good either way because I have a good Hill number for the year. I got good, good party numbers as well. So uh, as long as it's one of those two guys and here I am saying, oh, it's got to be either Purdy or Hill. All right. And of course, someone else will win. So continue. The, th- the only thing I'll say about Purdy that I think would would maybe dissuade voters from putting him in, near the top is that when we talk about the Niners, right, and we talk about Purdy. It's always, well, he has Christian McCaffrey, Debo Samuel, Trent Williams, Shanahan, Juice, Kittle. Like, when you talk about Dak Prescott or Jalen Hurts, like, there's not as much conversation about, oh, they have this and that, they're helped by this and that. With, with Brock Purdy, it's always a but. Brock Purdy's good, but. Brock Purdy has this to help him out. And I think that that, what, that, that look, I agree with the storyline about it, but I think voters are going to try to find every way to have – someone who you don't have to say that about. And we've seen this year too, in the games when he did not have a full offense, they're not the same team. And those will be, you know, if there's, if it's close, I think people will use those points against Brock Purdy versus a Dak Prescott who will look, he's got a great supporting cast around him too. So does Jalen Hurts. I mean, they all have supporting cast around them, but I think for Purdy, especially when people talk about him right or wrong, they use those qualifiers. He's good but he has these guys with him. He's good, and he has the head coach. So that's my only pushback about Purdy is that I think that, if possible, voters will use that against him if they can. Yeah, the, the one thing I will say is it's not like Purdy's like just kind of being like workman. Like, he leads the league in completion percentage and what air yards per attempt. So it's like – or, or yards, like yards per attempt. It's like – it's not just little dink and dunk where it's all yak. Like, he's, he's delivering the ball. Like, it's – I, I think I think he's clearly the front runner. So it will, uh, but I, I do understand where you're coming from. And obviously, you mentioned Dak. We've mentioned the Eagles. Uh, that's the biggest game I think uh, of the weekend. And where are we right now? Three and a half, I think. Uh, we we get yeah, Dallas minus three and a half at home Sunday night uh, against the Eagles. Feels like this is going to kind of be one-way traffic. It feels like everybody's kind of been waiting to bet on Dallas in this game uh, since they met in Philly a few weeks ago. A final game, I think, of that gauntlet that the Eagles have had to go to and that the Eagles kind of get, I don't want to say exposed or kind of punched in the face last week. Maybe they were worn down a little bit. Maybe this is a, an opportunity for them to kind of get, get a regroup after a week. But Dallas minus three and a half, 52 seems to be the number. Sammy, you make a play on this one? Man, it's a high total now, isn't it? Open 48 and a half and now 52, which has gone through a very Mm -hmm. important 49 and 51. I might wait this out. I know the primetime unders are very popular, but if this gets to 52 and a half, 53, I might just have to go under. These two teams know each other extremely well. I know the offenses are really good. And I think everybody knows that you have two of the three favorites for MVP under center and what should be a pretty good game of the week on Fox or actually Sunday night game. I'm sorry. The, uh, the 820 game Sunday night. Duh. I, that's a lot of points guys. I mean, we're watching games constantly in the thirties and forties and the hang of 52, 52 and a half in my face. That's a lot of points. Dallas's defense should get through to the pocket. I think we get points, but is it really going to be 31, 27? I just, I don't know. I'm inclined to think this is under at 42, 43, or 52, 53 for that matter. There, there's Mr. Primetime under again. And there he is following the trend. <laughs> yes, following trends, Sammy. There you go. This has happened in three straight games. <laughs> yeah, they've the overs have made a little comeback, though, because what was it, Sunday night Chiefs Packers and then the um then then the Monday night game went way over with Browning and uh you know Brown, Browning playing well in Jacksonville. I think Dallas wins. I don't know how healthy Hurts is. But my bet, I don't want to lay the three and a half, even though I think Dallas wins here. 
My bet here, Dallas team total over 27 and a half. Same as last week against Seattle. Uh, you can get this minus 115. I just think they're going to get their points. This is four straight home games for Dallas where they scored 40 plus. Now you say some of that, oh, they're getting, you know, pick pick sixes in, in, in some of those games. Okay. But they're, they're a machine on offense, especially at home. Uh, Philly's linebackers, Philly's ability to cover the slot. I just think there's a lot of holes there. Uh, you're getting good weather indoors where, where the conditions aren't going to be a factor. Um, uh, to me, Dallas is going to get their points. They're going to get their 28, 31 points. I don't, I don't know how much Philly's going to score. Maybe I should just bet Dallas, but I think isolating here and just taking Dallas to score 28 plus is, is the way to play this. This is just such a, such a tough stress for Philly, man. Like they, they're, they have these back to back to back to back, like emotional, physical games against you know rivals um in 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 the cowboys obviously a team like the chiefs who they wanted to beat after super bowl loss a team like the niners who they beat last year but niners had, had talked for for months and months and months about wanting to beat them again it just feels like a tough physical and emotional stress for philly to be able to, to now again for like the fourth straight week get up for one of the better teams in the nfl you're on the road. You're playing on a fast surface, which really benefits Dallas in this situation. Jalen Hurts, I think, still sort of not 100%. The offensive defense, not what they were last season. I'm not sure I have a play on this game. I just feel like it's it's another really difficult spot for Philly for uh, just emotionally and physically to be ready to play 100% in this game. While the Cowboys have had 10 days. It's the second straight week. The, the Eagles are playing an opponent Good point. who has 10 days to prepare for them. So, 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 so like the, the schedule makers sort of did them wrong. They, they, they give the Niners 10 days and the Cowboys 10 days to play Philly. So I think everything's pointing to Cowboys. Would I wager on the Cowboys minus three and a half? I don't think so. Um, but it, it's a tough spot for Philly uh, for the fourth straight week to get up for, for a game like this. And, and then you look on the other, you get on the other hand, Seattle, San Francisco, when you got the, the Seahawks kind of getting in some extra rest going to San Francisco. Uh, well, you were on that a couple of weeks ago about the, the Seahawks to to miss the playoffs, getting a really good plus number. Now you're going to think you're looking at like minus minus 180 or 190 on them to, to miss the playoffs. Um, this does not feel like a close game, despite the fact that you're getting Seattle with the extra rest playing the uh, Thursday game in Dallas. Uh, they played well, but ultimately could not get the win down there. Uh, I think there's going to be a, a, a large assumption of people who just uh, a large assumption by people, I should say, uh, of, of just like a Niners won that game. They're going to have a letdown this week. Um, I don't think that's going to be the case. I just don't think this is a good matchup for Seattle. Uh, I think the Niners win this game pretty easily here. Like it was one of the two things I actually liked this week uh, in the NFL, grabbing the Giants plus the points and grabbing the uh, the Niners minus the 10 and a half. So anybody, anybody any thoughts on the uh, the other team coming out of that Philadelphia-San Francisco game last week? It's a lot of points. It seems too high. And you mentioned the rest. Seattle played well last week against Dallas. Could have won the game. We're right there. They covered. I'm just, I have no appetite to step in front of this 49ers team. That's not going to be a fun experience to sit there and root against the 49ers. I mean, we saw this game a few weeks ago on Thanksgiving. It wasn't close. It wasn't even as close as the final score. San Francisco could have named their their price. So uh, it looks like a, a touch high. So it's no play for me. I'm, not, I'm just not stepping in front of San Francisco. I think we'll look elsewhere now uh, in that division. Speaking of a touch high, does, does Rams Ravens seem a little high? South Point's actually popping eight right now, but it's I see sevens out there. I see seven and a half. It seems like they're, I mean, definitely shot for the best number here. But uh, Nakua, I guess, is going to play. I, I guess the weather is going to be bad, so maybe that does affect the Rams here. But it feels a little high here. But I, I still don't know. Again, if I want to get in front of the Ravens off of the the, the off week last week, right. maybe if Nakua is not fully healthy and you get the bad weather. Uh, I don't know if there's a play here for me in this game either, unfortunately, but I guess if you had to pick a side here, maybe you just, you, you mentioned it earlier about the, it, it, when, when in doubt, just kind of take the dog in, in some of these games. Unlike, un, unlike though, those games where you got bad quarterback play, you got really good quarterback play here with the, uh, with Lamar and, and Matthew Stafford, Sammy, any, any thoughts on uh, Rams Ravens? Yeah, just looking at the market, I was really surprised to see the Rams go from plus seven to plus eight at South Point. So there's no resistance there, at least with Chris Andrews and the guys at the South Point. They're laying the number. They're laying seven, seven and a half, which is pretty telling. And then let's just rewind to what you just said. 
two good quarterbacks, Stafford, Lamar Jackson. Offense has been pretty good. The Rams just put, what, 37 and 36 up in the last two weeks. And yet, look at the total, guys. This went from 44 to 40 and didn't really stop. And we're now seeing 39 and a half at a couple shops. So they are shorting offense in Baltimore. Pay attention to that weather report. If it's going to be really windy, because wind is more important than snow. Any odds maker will tell you that. Wind is way more important than you know rain or snow. If it's going to be 20 mile an hour winds in Maryland, and you got you know two really good offenses, that's going to negate a lot of those big plays. So when you see a total with two really good quarterbacks go down and keep going down, that's eye opening to me. Bear, I have an idea because you have the Rams at what plus 490 to make the playoffs. Yes. How about a two team teaser to hedge a little bit? And I just think this is a good, a bet, good bet as a standalone, just, you know, on its own merit Ravens, you tease them down to two and you tease up, pick your, pick your poison here. Bengals up to seven and a half at home against the Colts or the bills up to seven and a half against the Chiefs. So I think the Ravens are a good teaser leg with either one of those two, or maybe both, maybe you just kind of round robbing them and tease both of them. I like the, I like that bill's leg. I like that bill's leg a yeah. lot there. You get up to seven and a half. Yeah. But I'm looking at the weather report. Um, Rain, winds, uh, winds 20, 20 miles an hour. 10 to 20. That's a lot of wind, man. 20 miles an wind. hour is a lot that of wind for that rain, Rams yeah. offense to deal with. Yep. Jeff, what, 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 what do we think of your, uh, of, of your Chiefs this week? Look, I mean, as I mentioned earlier, I mean, when they're under a field goal, I, I typically just take Patrick Mahomes. His numbers over the years have been great in the spot. Now, he did lose this in the same situation against the Eagles a couple weeks ago. Um, look, to me, Kansas City, it's – if their offense just figures it out, which I keep saying now for seven, eight weeks in a row, they're going to be fine. Their defense is good still, even though Chris Jones seemed to disappear. Like the Packers, I'm not even sure he played against the Packers. Uh, but generally speaking, their defense is fine. The Brian Cook injury does stink, and hopefully he's back at some point this season. But their offense can just figure it out. It's too many drops. It's bad routes. It's bad penalties. Um, and, you know, at the end of that game, too, just sort of run the football. You ran the ball well all game. And in a situation in the fourth quarter, we start throwing the ball again everywhere. So I keep – I see this every week. If they figure out their offense, to me, they're just as good as any of their chief season with a better defense. But the offense is just so unreliable right now. It's, just, it's not a spot Kansas City has been in under Patrick Mahomes. Ray she Rice is getting more targets, though. If, if you're looking for some, some, you know, maybe somewhere to wager – on this game, uh, a prop with either receiving yards for him or receptions. He's starting to become a big part of the offense, which he has to be. So I don't know, man. I, I The Bills have given up a ton of points with all their defensive injuries. Maybe this is a week the Chiefs offense can, can really get right and get a situation where they win this game. These games tend to be pretty close, pretty competitive against Buffalo. It's a good measuring stick for both teams. I have no money in this game right now, guys. I, I can't do it with, with Kansas' offense. The mistakes are bad. I mean, the, the bad, timely penalties – uh, you know, a guy drops a ball, a guy, Sky Moore runs that route where he just stops halfway through. Sort of everyone makes a mistake each each game that they can't overcome. I mentioned if you like the Bills, take them 50 to 1 to win the Super Bowl. If you like the Chiefs, plus 300 to be the one seed, because after this, they their schedule, Raiders, Patriots, Chargers, and they have the head-to-head -head with Miami because they beat them. If they win this, is is for all the issues you mentioned, for all the you know they have no receivers, yeah. uh, they can't catch the ball. If they win this, the schedule after is pretty reasonable. They've got some good tie break scenarios. Plus three hundred to, to to be the one seed, uh, it's not a bad bet. But I got a feeling Buffalo beats them. I just got a buffalo. I, I got a feeling Buffalo has a run in them here. And, and if you look at Miami, like like their 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 schedule, they they, they got Tough. Cowboys, Ravens, Bills to finish. So they, they, there may be a couple of losses that pop up on the on on the Dolphins schedule. Late in the year, and the, and the Chiefs maybe even with a loss could wind up being the uh, the number the number one seed in the AFC. Uh, we we back in Jake Browning again, or is that kind of a Monday night? I don't want to say fluke, but is that kind of little aberration. Uh, pick him here against the the Colts we mentioned earlier to maybe uh, make some noise in that division. No, it's a no for me. He did look Jake he Browning. did look good though. Me too. I I don't know where that came from. Go ahead, but yeah, that was a surprising performance. He looked I, I, good. I watched a lot of Jake Browning in college, guys. I did not see this coming. I can tell you, I I was, I was in, I was shocked. I, I fell asleep as you guys joke on, on the text thread all the time. I fell asleep at some point during the middle of the game, and I woke <laughs> up and I was like twenty thirty two of thirty seven for three hundred and fifty yards. Like what? That, to me, that's a diamond on Jacksonville's defense. Like, I, what, like what are we doing, Jacksonville? You let a backup quarterback slice you up like this? So 
I look, the, the backup quarterback thing is interesting this season. We, we've seen for a lot of these guys early on when they first sort of get in the lineup outside of a couple of, you know, Tim Boyles and, and Bailey Zappies um, that we're, we're seeing a sort of a, a pop early, right? A, a little pop early. And then all of a sudden it's like, okay, we have film on this guy and we start seeing kind of a backslide back to sort of back to being a backup type status of, of a quarterback. So I do wonder if it's this week, the Colts defense is better than their offense. They just, you know, they, they won a, a grimy game in Tennessee. If Tennessee makes that extra point. They probably don't win that game. So I'm, I'm off this game. I don't have a play for it. I'm ladder and Jamar chase 150 to score a touchdown 10 to one to score two 90 to one to score three. These numbers guys are so much higher with Browning than they were with burrow. And I'm not saying that, Jamar Chase is going to score three touchdowns, but the three touchdown number with Burrow was like 50 to one. Now that it's Browning, it's up to 90 to one at one of these sports books. And I promise you, by the time you listen to this, the 90 to one will be gone because I'm about to bet it right now. <laughs> 90 to one is not right. It is mathematically incorrect. How can you be 10 to one to score two and 90 to one to score three? He had two last week. And this is the security blankie for a young quarterback. I think he gets one and he might get two, but if he gets three, I'm going to go, I'm going to make this bet right now at 90 to one. I'll be back. Oh boy. Can you, can you get a little piece of that for me? I don't know. Just throwing a number and, and I'll Venmo you because the 90 to one, I, the, the FOMO of, of you winning that and me not winning that is real. So I'll take a little bit of that. That's, that's not a bad one. Uh, Wait, Jeff what do you Alou like for MVP though? Who's the MVP of the league? I think it's Tyree kill. I mean, I, yeah, don't, exactly. I don't know how you give it to her. <laughs> Done. Um, Jeff alluded to something Jacksonville. We, we mentioned last week, they're one of these teams you know, they're, are they contender? Are they not? Can we cross them off? This is to me a paper tiger. That's a terrible loss. That team is not going to a super bowl, winning a super bowl. If, if they do, I'll end up looking like an idiot. But to me, that team is just, they take advantage of being a bad division. Remember last year, the Titans were up like four or five games late and everybody got hurt and the Jack and the Jag needed to squeak by Josh Dobbs at home with a defensive touchdown. Uh, the Jags have to prove it. They're, they're just, to me, they're off the list in terms of a contender at this point. Oh no, they, 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 they totally are. I mean, I, I think the AFC contenders, like here's an interesting question. If you and the AFC assume Ravens, Assume Chiefs. Who would you take as the third, the third Super Bowl contender in the AFC? Who would be the your number three? Chiefs one, Ravens two, or Ravens one, Chiefs two. Who's three? Boy, I want to say Buffalo, but Miami's path is so much easier. Buffalo might not even make it. It's it's it's, it's Miami just because. It, yeah, I mean, I can't argue with you. I really can't. Like, here's the thing about it. You, to me, you look at sort of the success of, of postseason quarterbacks right now. And, and this way, to me, the Chiefs are still a great option in the AFC. So you have Lamar Jackson has one playoff win. I'm not saying he can't win more this year, but he's got one, I believe, right? One playoff win. Tua has zero, right? I think I'm right on that. Um, it, what, Jacksonville has one, and that's if they even make it in. They had to, they, they, you know, Trevor Lawrence needed a, a historic comeback to make that happen. The Texans, zero, right? The the Bills are the team who have playoff experience. They have playoff wins. They they know how to operate in that sort of environment, play in bad weather games. I know they didn't win that bad weather game last season, but it's it's Josh Allen. It's Buffalo who's been there before. I'm not saying that any teams can't just do it in year one, but typically in, in the, 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 the NFL postseason guys, it typically sort of takes a year to get in, sort of get in that environment, and then the, the next year is sort of the year that, you know, even down three, four, five years, a lot of teams in the first year of their sort of getting in the playoffs don't just boom, pop, and go right to the and right to the Super Bowl. So I, I just don't think the AFC has those teams outside of Kansas City that you can really trust. Or, and Buffalo, Buffalo is that team sitting right there who's done it before. Let me say this quickly. I know that we don't like to get lost in the power ratings and keep your glasses on and shut up nerd. But from a power rating standpoint, it's Baltimore, Kansas City, Buffalo. That's one, two, three. Buffalo, though, understand this. Buffalo has been not only the misunderstood team, but the just playing down to your number. I mean, this was the highest power rated team in football coming into the season to some people, the Buffalo Bills, best roster in football. They have played so down and underachieved so much. Yet, if Buffalo can figure it out through December into January, nobody wants to play them. The problem is Buffalo has done itself no favors. They are 11th right now in the AFC. There's room to go. There's time left. 
if this team gets in, though, no, nobody wants to play him. I agree with the crew. Yeah, and not to like losing to the Jets, losing to the Patriots, nearly losing oh. to the Giants. <laughs> And uh, and somehow maybe get, getting to the Super Bowl. I'd forgotten uh, we, they lost to the Patriots. That has not aged well. That has really that has really not no. aged well. Look, no. we can sit here and we all agree they're dangerous if they get in. And, and just I'll play devil's advocate to my own point of them being dangerous. Like Sammy said, they're 11th in the AFC. They're six and six. They have at the Chiefs this week, Cowboys, and they still have at Miami. That's not easy. So you probably got to win at least like three out of that four. That's not going to be easy. Again, if they get in, we know they're dangerous. What bothers me too about them, the coach, the coach is just so conservative. You know, a couple of weeks ago, 20 seconds left tie game against the Eagles. All right, we're just going to take our knees and we're going to go overtime. Most coaches wouldn't do that. You have Allen, you have the ultimate weapon. He's just, McDermott gets a little tight in these spots. I don't trust him in these big situations. You know, we saw the 13 seconds a few years ago against the chiefs where they played that ridiculous defense. They didn't keep the ball inbounds with the kick. So McDermott scares me. The schedule scares me, but Hey, it's, it's the NFL. It's wide open. And, you know, all these quarterbacks are hurt. If they get in the, the, the playoffs would, be, would benefit like the NFL, it would be good for the NFL if he's in because Herbert's not in Burroughs hurt Rogers hurt. It, it would be good for the league. If Allen gets in as opposed to, you know, Minshew or one of these guys, yeah. they have a higher point differential than Kansas city, Philly, Detroit, Houston, and Jacksonville. But the thing about the NFL, if you're inconsistent, you're dead. And they are the most inconsistent team in the league. Correct. They're they're 32nd in variance according to DVOA, which is by the way, it's like they've done this for five years now. They're the, the highest variance team each year because Josh Allen, it's not totally his fault, but I just think that there are games when like it's up and games when it's down and games in the middle. And that's why they're, they're the 32nd in variance, which is it's hard. We just kind of counters all our points. It's hard to wager on them sometimes because you don't know what's it's all on his shoulders. There's there's not a lot of you know plan B, plan C. It's all just Allen, go make a play, like you've mentioned, like we talked about, you know, on the college pod with Caleb Williams. It's just hey, Josh Allen, go do something. There's not a lot of you know other things to do. It's Allen digs and not much else. Go 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 do something before we all go do something else. Anything we haven't hit on? Any other plays that you want to get out there for this weekend? No, unless you got something in the NBA you want to cook us cook, cook up for us here, you know, and give us uh, an NBA I'll, winner. I'll, I, I'll, I'll, get, I'll get my I'll get my IST championship uh, play ready for you by uh, by 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 next week, all right? Or by I don't even know what, what when when is that game? Uh, I think they play the Saturday of Army Navy, so in a couple of days, uh, people will be listening this Friday. So the, the same day oh. of I think they scheduled on purpose so they could play that championship where a day with no college football and man, Saturday's going to be weird without a lot of college football. It's going to be definitely uh, a little bit of an adjustment. College here. hoops, college we got a lot True. of a lot of college hoops on Saturday too. Hopefully, good point. It'd be it'd be, it'd be, it'd be a fun hopefully, betting day. Hope, hopefully, hopefully, yeah. All right, guys. Everybody have a great weekend. Good luck to us all. Always fun. Good conversation there. We we covered a lot of ground certainly in the uh, in the wards, and I think we have a little uh, a little uh, infighting going on amongst the show group between Tyree Kill and Camp Camp Hill and, and Camp Hurdy. I actually reside in both of them, so uh, as long as one of them wins, I'm happy. You're just a, you're just a peacemaker, so. Bear. You're just a big old a big old peacemaker. Hey, exactly right. um, I'm, I'm, look, I'm, I'm telling you, a big the, cuddly the thing- bear. No. Just a big cuddly teddy bear. No, 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 no violence. Nothing here. I'm just, I just, I just try and like anybody. The the thing about, I'm telling you guys, the 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 Tyree kill. If he wins, if he gets 2,000 yards, like that, it's a, it's a viable wager bear. If he can break the milestones and become the best wide receiver season of all time. Because again, you look at Adrian Peterson. You look at Sean Alexander. You look at LT. They had seasons. I think Marshall Falk was 2,000. They had seasons that were out of this world. Like, you couldn't ignore that. If Tyreek gets 2,000 yards receiving, how do you ignore that production in a year when you don't have a quarterback who might be worthy of MVP? That That's my best argument for two as MVP, and I think it, it really can hold up here down the stretch. You know, I, I think it can uh, as well. And down the stretch, I, I know it's been a massive week uh, in Circa Survivor where I think we're down to – 30 people now or maybe even under 30 and uh this pod is coming out after thursday if i were still in survivor i would be using the pittsburgh steelers i would have used the pittsburgh steelers so maybe i will will have been uh, out by now maybe i will have been advanced by now but unfortunately the steelers patriots game uh was played prior to the release of this so that does you no good i boy i mean you're you're assuming that you've used all of the good teams by now. So like, I'm just going to take Kansas city, Miami, uh, 
Baltimore, like San Francisco, like all of those teams out and say like, okay, we, we can't use any of those. So it, it's, what, it's I mean, tough you, sledding this what week, a, man. What about char- Chargers over Broncos? Is that, you willing to do that? I'm looking at it right mm-hmm. now. Chargers, Broncos, you, is you willing to make that wager? Isn't the isn't it never the Chargers? Isn't that the rule in Survivor? Yeah, never, it's ever. never. What about? I mean, Browns against uh, uh, hobbled Trevor Lawrence. That's the one. That's the one that that um I'm kind of gravitating towards. Uh, Flacco and the Browns against w- whatever is on the field for Jacksonville after the brutal Monday night loss uh, on the field, and then with the with the injuries as well. Like I think the Browns would be my play. Uh, at this point, if I didn't have the uh, the Steelers option, I already used that on Thursday. But but I think the Browns clearly offensively, like Flacco has been better than Walker or or DTR. And like I think the fact the Browns have been so good at home this year, I think you've seen a much better performance from them defensively. Uh, I think I think Cleveland would be my pick. I'd avoid Green Bay, obviously. I already said I like the uh, the Giants. You. you uh, Philly Dallas, I think, is a game you probably want no part of. Um, maybe people would take Dallas and they think it's a good spot, uh, but I certainly wouldn't want a, a part of that. Uh, you would think Houston should beat the Jets, but it's the NFL and crazy stuff happens. Uh, New Orleans is completely untrustable. The Bears on the at home uh, against the Lions. You want the Lions in a bad weather game outside in Chicago against a team they should have lost no. already? No. Yeah, it's the Browns. Yeah, I mean, it, it, I think it has to be in the situation. Even Trevor Lawrence is hobbled. I, 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 if I was Jacksonville, I wouldn't play him. I, I know that you want to try to win every game. But your goal is to is to have him healthy for the postseason at this point. And, and you're not a shoe in. You're not guaranteed to be there. And even if you don't win the the division. You're good enough team to win a road game. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think whole field advantage is that big of a deal in the NFL anymore. We know that for point spread purposes, it hasn't been bare, right? It's no longer three. It's down to right. two and, and maybe one and a half. And so your goal is just to get Trevor Lawrence healthy and, and get him a cart, please. Get him a cart to drive him to the locker room. Oh. Please, Jacksonville, get him a cart. Come on, man. Even if he refuses the cart, put him on the dang cart. Get like, come on, yeah, exactly. figure it out. We, we, we get it. You want to walk? You know, yeah, yeah, we, you want to walk off field? Sure. Yes, I want to go undefeated in my bets every week too. But I don't get on the cart, take pressure off your leg, and, and start the rehab immediately. Unbelievable. Yes. All right, Bear. All right, Bear. Let's get to our our best bets now. Uh, before we do that, let's recap. You have one wager so far in this NFL podcast. You have the Giants plus six and a half at home against Green Bay Packers on Monday Night Football. All right, Bear. Best bet of the week for the National Football League. What do you got? San Francisco 49ers. I alluded to it uh, in the group chat. I don't think this game is close. Uh, I think it's a terrible matchup for the Niner, for the uh, for the Seahawks. If you look, every single one of the 49ers wins except for one has come by at least 13 points, including that 31-13 route in Seattle a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I think a lot of people are expecting the Niners to kind of uh, let up and maybe be a little flat off with a big win uh, in, in Philadelphia on Sunday. I don't think that's the case. I think the bigger deal here is that the Niners potentially have a chance to get that one seed, depending on what happens with the Eagles the rest of the way. Uh, I, I, I don't think this one's close. So I lay the 10 and a half uh, with, with San Francisco here. Is there any worry at all that the Niners sort of emotionally put all of that into that Eagles game? and might be a little flat early in this game. There is, but at the same time, I think there's also a bit of confidence about the San Francisco team that I think they went oh, into yeah. that game expecting to win and, and show that they were the best team in the league. And I think that may, that game may have served as a launching point for the rest of the year with this team to, to win out, make yourself 14 and three, put yourself in a position to, to potentially be the number one seed and not have to play a, an NFC championship game on the road. Like they've had to the last uh, couple of years where it ultimately didn't work out for them. So I, I love this team. I, I love, I love how deep they are. I love, I love how many playmakers they have. I, I love the attitude and the way they get after the quarterback. Now uh, you just saw the way they took that game over. I fell behind early and it was like, all right, no, we're, we're good. We're just going to, 
we're just going to do our thing. And we know over the course of 60 minutes, we're better. And they did. And I, think, uh, I think I said, despite Seattle having a little uh, extra rest coming into this game, I just don't like the matchup for them at all. I'm with you here. All right, my best bet. I went with a prop this week, guys. I, I, just struggling in the NFL. The game stink this week, Bear. I'm going with Patrick Mahomes against Buffalo over 26 and a half rushing yards. In bigger games in his career, and this is a giant game, they, the offense is going to get back on track. He tends to run the ball a little bit more. In the last four Buffalo games, he had 36 yards rushing against them, 61, 21, which would be under, obviously, and 69 in the playoff game in 2022 and this season buffalo is allowed 65 yards to hertz rushing now, obviously that's more of a run-based offense for hertz but 30 to wilson 31 to lawrence against quarterbacks that can run the middle linebacker being hurt really affects the ability to stop a quarterback scrambling and bear this to me is a game where patrick mahomes is going to try to do everything he can to win this game to get them back on track after losing to to philly and losing to the packers so i like mahomes here to get a bunch of rushing yards, use his legs, and uh, I'll go Patrick Mahomes over 26 and a half rush yards. What do you think? I, I, I like your philosophy there. And this is kind of similar to what you talked about last week on the college pod uh, with Bo Nix in the Pac-12 championship game, right? Oregon kind of using yeah. his legs. And we saw, we saw that one go over uh, very easily on that total. So I, I like I like your uh your strategy, I like the call, I like the analysis. Hopefully it will uh, Hopefully, it'll be as easy of a winner as that one was. I hope so. But let's uh, let's remind everyone, it's not too late to play the free Fox Super 6 game for Week 14. Just download the Fox Sports app right now and make your picks for a chance to win your share of $10,000 in weekly cash prizes. Uh, Bear, you get to stay home this weekend. This is the first weekend since August, late August. You are home. How, how you spend this weekend, Bear? Are you going to relax and cook out? You going to watch some tea? Like, what are you going to do? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll yeah, get 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 a nice workout in on, on Saturday morning, which has been unusual for me. Maybe and then tune into maybe maybe I'll tune into a show that I used to work on for about twenty somewhat years while I'm uh, at the gym, knocking off some time on the uh, on the elliptical there. But yeah, we're actually. We're, we're we're having kind of like a date night on Saturday night, my wife. We're actually going to Whoa. see Bocelli in Hartford. <laughs> yeah, how about that? Look at I'm you. Have a nice Look at you. And, a little yeah. football. Yeah, a football night, a football weekend date night. I love it, Bear. Exactly, and then hopefully, yeah, I'll be. I'll be. She already told me. She goes, you know, you're going to be checking your phone to see who won the Heisman, and uh, and I. Sh I'll be like, yeah, yes, actually, I will. <laughs> We have a very nice paid in coming of Jaden Daniels uh, does does win the Heisman Trophy. So uh, yes, I will be checking the phone. But yeah, I'm looking forward. I'm looking forward to it, having a uh, a weekend here at home, waking up on my own bed on both Friday and Saturday morning, and and, uh, and being able to just kind of enjoy the day. It's gonna, see, it's going to be like my last weekend to kind of get stuff done too because of my surgery next week like if i have to do any christmas shopping i need to get that done this week i need i need to do like around the house errands and like catching up on expense reports like oh, yeah. i need to do all this stuff, jam that into early next week because i think starting next uh friday i'm going to be sitting there like this pecking away on the keyboard for a while and uh not being able to do a whole lot so uh yeah it, it will be fun and then next weekend we'll have a uh, We'll have some ball games to sit and watch and enjoy and, and live bet and give each other a hard time over and uh, NFL games of, I think coming on the weekends as well. So it'll be a uh, it'll it'll it'll, yeah. it'll be fun. That's for sure. I'll, I'll, I'll have plenty of entertainment to uh, to get me through. That's for sure. I love so, it. And look, if you hit the Jane Daniels Heisman number, by the way, while you're at dinner, you might get a nicer bottle of wine for dinner too. Like your wife should should be happy you're watching the Heisman show. That, 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 that is absolutely correct. I'll have to, I'll have to look for a nice uh, a bottle of a nice little, uh, maybe a Magnum too. Maybe we uh, maybe we go even even Ooh. larger. Than that. There's no way, there's no way the two of us could finish off a Magnum. That's for sure. But uh, yeah, I'll have to uh, I'll have to uh, I'll have to uh, consult Brady Quinn, my uh, my big noon kickoff uh, colleague. He's a uh, he's a very yeah. big wine guy, and he, uh, he's made some great taste. So I'll have to uh, I'll have to go into the Brady Quinn section of the wine list for me. But uh, that's it for now. So uh, hopefully the uh, the NFL games will uh, provide uh, entertainment and excitement. A couple of uh, while the, a lot of the games don't look necessarily great on the schedule, I'm sure they're going to turn out great. You got the you got the Bills Chiefs, you got Eagles Cowboys. Two two great games later in the afternoon and the evening. 
two Monday night games. It's the NFL, you know we're going to watch it. You know we're going to bet on it, regardless of what it looks like. So, I'm Jeff, I'm Sammy P, I'm Will, I'm Bear. Appreciate you again downloading, listening, subscribing, watching on the YouTube channel, uh, wherever you get your podcast as well. I appreciate all the kind words and the interaction throughout the year. And remember, bless you bet. The more you lose when you win. <laughs>